Hey all, Bill Greenberg with OneScholar.com and no, don't adjust your calendars, it is actually Saturday. Sorry about yesterday. For those of you who don't know, I have some uh, issues with my legs and I have some mobility issues. So yesterday was a full day with trainers and with working out and with doctors and nothing serious and uh, I'm fine but I do have uh, some issues getting around a little bit and so yes it was full so but there were some a number of good stories I actually put them together didn't have time to do the video so I'm doing it this morning so uh, I hope you enjoy this I hope you go to the website and check it out check out the entire articles on the website www.phonescholar.com and follow me on Twitter at phonescholar at Facebook at phonescholar but here's what we got going on today Verizon LTE best sprint WiMAX in speed tests and a BTIG research did over a thousand tests between the Verizon uh, LTE and the Sprint WiMAX in uh, part of New York, and they did it uh, based on three criteria or two criteria: one in building, one uh, near a window, and then they did combine the score of both. And they did um, average download speeds at megabits per second, average upload speeds at megabits per second, and then the latency in milliseconds and the number of tests. And there's a chart in the article that you can actually see. And uh, I bet you're wondering who won. Well, here's a, they, and they did it with a Thunderbolt and an Evo 4G. And they did it uh, tethered to both an iPad 2 and to a Toshiba laptop. That's how they did it, using the mobile hotspot as, the, as their test. And just <laughs> the average download speed for Verizon was 9.1, which is very good. Uh, the average upload speed, 5.3. The average download speed for the Sprint, 1.2. The average up speed, 0.66. So the LTE, the Verizon LTE, just blew the doors off of Sprint. Now remember, this is in one area, not moving, using Tether. So in your area, it could be seriously a lot different uh, if you compare one to the other, if you compare phone to phone, just using the phones. But for the most part, in the New York area, but I'm saying if you're stagnant in an area, and they're showing that the Thunderbolt just has phenomenal speeds, and that the LTE seems to be the standard to go, which is one of the, I think one of the reasons why everybody's going with LTE. Uh, now they also said, funny enough, because this has been a big problem, the Thunderbolt actually showed better battery life, which I don't know though that means if the Thunderbolt actually showed a decent battery life, or if the Evo just showed a pathetic battery life, because they didn't go into specifics with that. But check out the chart on the article, I think you'll find it interesting. Next, eBay resellers score huge profits on iPad 2 sales. And I got a question for you. Do you have an iPad 2 and you're looking to make some money? Because with the tsunami and everything that happened over in Japan, it looks like the supply lines for the iPad 2, which were already very, very, very tight, may be affected. And there's people going on to eBay and selling their iPad 2s for a phenomenal amount. And if you can wait, if you need some money, you have an iPad 2, you can wait another six to eight weeks to get a new one. I mean, just to give you a prime example, on eBay, the average price for the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi unit is going for $697. Now that's a $499 retail price, $697. The 64 gigabyte is going for an average of $963, which the retail on that is $699. And the 64 Wi-Fi 3G is going for $1235. These are average prices. And that's a 29. Now they don't say if they're in the box brand new or if they're in the box being used. They, they didn't go into specifics with that, but you can check out that article. There's a link to that. So there's also a chart. Uh, on there showing how many have sold worldwide, where they've been sold through eBay, iPad 2. So like I said, if you need a little money, if you have an iPad 2 and you don't need that right away, you can go ahead and order, you can do this and go ahead and order one for, you know, have it paid for. Uh, and if you, you could almost buy the one that you bought originally, sell this pay a new, and pay a new one and almost get that for free also. So uh, you basically get one for free, not a bad deal. Next, Sidekick 4G to arrive on April 20th, according to Radio Shack tweet. Here we go. I've had a ton of people sending me messages about telling me, do you know when it's coming? When is it coming? Where it's coming? Stuff like that. Well, according to this tweet, which is on the, on the article, Radio Shack put out there, and it, you know it's pretty legitimate, that on April 20th, they're going to be carrying the Sidekick 4G for $99.99 with a two-year contract and data plan. Uh, it, obviously, this is a T-Mobile phone, so if it comes out then, they'll probably go there, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's at Best Buy, Walmart, all the other places, too. So check out the tweet. You'll see it. And lastly, HTC Flyer video demonstrates Sense, Scrape, and other features. And HTC is really trying to push their Flyer, which is also going to be um, the, the View 3G, 3D on Sprint when that comes out uh, later this spring or summer. And this is a six-minute video, and the really cool thing is I've tried to de describe the Sense and Scribe 
uh, features of this with the time mark. Well, this video really, really shows it. So, well, I don't know if this this uh, tablet's necessarily going to be a player. I think when once the ATC Scribe is something that's going to be very, very appealing. So go ahead and check out the video. I think you'll uh, find some find it very interesting. Under categories, AT and T, AT and T interest, phone insurance, and tracking bundle, which is really cool. Now, remember when phones first came out and they started offering insurance. I remember when I was working with Verizon, they first started with insurance and it was $1.99 a month. Uh, now they're up to seven, eight, ten, fifteen dollars. Well, AT&T is offering one for ten dollars, and they're combining their already existing insurance, which covers lost, stolen, or damaged phones, for a replacement with a deductible. And they're also adding to it services such as Mobile Locate, uh, which will find your lost or stolen phone, lock or sound an alarm for up to three minutes, uh, locate the last five locations it has, and give you turn-by-turn -turn directions to those areas and a remotely a lock or unlock. Now all the phones are offering this. Blackberry just put out their Protect and um, iPhone has Find My iPhone so they're, they're, uh, most of them have this now. Uh, so, but at and is just putting it together as a monthly thing. $10 for both if you want just the insurance, it's five bucks. Lastly, FCC Commissioner Cops not pleased with T-Mobile at t merger. Now I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that aren't pleased with this uh, outside of T-Mobile. Everybody at T-Mobile is pretty ecstatic. I don't know about the customers for T-Mobile, but everybody else is. But uh, let me tell you, the FCC um, chairman basically said that this merger would give, uh, as we know, 80% control to T-Mobile and Verizon and make it very difficult for smaller companies to compete and keep the price competitive down. Does it really matter whether he approves it or not? Not really, because the MC, NBC Comcast uh, merger a few years ago, which was, was the largest at the time, or one of the largest at the time, uh, he didn't approve that either. He didn't vote for it, but the FCC board did. Uh, so it went through, and of course, this also has to pass by the Department of Justice. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it's great he's voicing his opinion, but uh, I don't know whether his vote or not counts all that much if everybody approves it. And everybody's saying, for the most part, the speculation is this will be approved based on the concessions as at and is willing to give. So there you go. Anyway, that's it for today. Have a great rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you on Monday.